Hey guys, since we're still in the craze of a 3000 series, we figured we could do a quick review of an ASUS RTX 3070 TUF Gaming and give you a quick walkthrough of what is what. We may also do an overclocking guide for the 3000 series. Let us know in the comments below if you'd be interested to see it. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Okay, let's take a closer look at this highly sought after card. We already discussed the elegant look when we unboxed the 3080, and the 3070 is basically identical. In fact, from the front, you won't even be able to tell the difference. There's one big giveaway feature though, we'll point that out in a moment. The industrial look and an all metal shroud is combined with a grayscale color theme and a single RGB illumination at the top. It features an actual fan design, where the middle fan is spinning the opposite way, therefore reducing turbulence. It's nice to know that ASUS has also included the fan stop mode, which kicks in when the GPU temps fall below 55 degrees. The difference in sound levels is not that big, but every little counts, especially when you're surrounded with so many constantly humming devices. Here on the top side, it has the RGB section. It is not too intrusive, but it can be customized to your heart's desire using Armory Crate software, and you can easily sync it up with the rest of your components. There's also two 8-pin connectors as well as onboard LEDs notifying you if the power connectors are not plugged in correctly. The underside of the card is a bit different than the other 3000 series cards. This visual difference clearly sets the 3070 and the 3080 Tough Gaming cards apart. As you can see here, the 3070 does not have the GPU bracket exposed. Practically the whole PCB is covered with a protective metal backplate, leaving open just the end of the right hand side for a chunky vent. Like many ASUS cards, it does come with dual bias switch, where you can choose either performance mode at the expense of the noise levels, or drop down the performance and make it much more quiet. Ultimately, this allows you to tweak the fan profiles without the need of a software. For this card, I think it's safe to say, you might want to leave it permanently on performance mode, since the fans are already optimized. Space-wise, it will take up 2.7 slots, with most of the footprint being stacked with fins for better heat dissipation. The stainless steel I.O. panel has five display connectors. Three of them are DisplayPort 1.4 and two HDMI 2.1. Asus RTX 3070 comes with 5,888 CUDA cores and is boasting 8GB of GDDR6 memory with speeds of 14 gigabits per second on a 256-bit bus. Other features include second-gen RT cores for improved ray tracing performance and a third-gen Tensor cores, which come in very handy when enabling DLSS. Something to note, the cooler on this card is the same as the 3080, which was designed for a more powerful card, making it a bit of an overkill for the 3070. Ultimately, the end user is reaping the benefits and will have a much cooler system. So how does all of this translate into real world performance? For this testing, we've used our new AMD test bench with Ryzen 9 5950X, and we've tested it against RTX 2080 Super, as well as some higher end cards like Radeon, RX 6800 XT and RTX 3090, just to show the performance delta. Starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, at 1080p we see RTX 3070 is about 15% faster than RTX 2080 Super on average FPS and 13% on the 1 percentiles. This puts it about the same distance away from RX 6800 XT. In 1440p we see basically exactly the same difference between these cards. RTX 3070 is 15% faster than RTX 2080 Super and is about 18% slower than RX 6800 XT. At 4K, this card just barely scraped the 60fps mark, which is not something that RTX 2080 Super could ever do. This, to my mind, is not what this card is designed for. It is more suitable for high frame rate 1080p gaming or moderate frame rate at 1440p. Moving to Horizon Zero Dawn, at 1080p, this card delivers very strong average FPS, even against RTX 3090, but does suffer on the 1 percentiles. Bumping resolution to 1440p, we still see good average performance, but 8GB of VRAM starts to really affect performance. Horizon Zero Dawn performs best at 12GB of VRAM or more. This is especially well illustrated in 4K, where 1 percentile performance becomes very unstable. If you are into eSports, and Counter-Strike in particular, then in both 1080p and 4K, you'll have no issues playing with any of these cards. And to be fair, for most people, the difference between 200 FPS and 400 FPS at 4K is not really gonna matter. For those who are looking to turn on ray tracing with lower resolutions, RTX 3070 may actually be an incredible value. Check out these scores in 3D Mark Port Royal. We have RTX 3070 just behind RX 6800 XT, which is a full GPU tier more expensive. 
in Rivebreaker at 1080p, we see about 24% improvement over RTX 2080 Super and staying about 14% behind RX 6800 XT. Bumping up the settings to 1440p, the gap shrinks to 8% and going all the way up to 4K, the score evens out. And this is just raw performance without any upscaling like DLSS. Gaming aside, this card can also be pretty good in light productivity tasks due to a very efficient NVENC encoder. Here in Blender, in the shorter BMW test, it beats out RX 6800 XT, but is slower in the longer classroom test. We also ran Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve benchmark from Puget Systems, and here the card does adequately for anyone starting up in video editing or working mostly at 1080p projects. Anything higher would really benefit from more than 8GB of VRAM. With the main performance numbers out of the way, let's focus on thermals for the moment. Quick note, our embed studio temperature is 26.5 degrees Celsius. In gaming, RTX 3070 would stay very close to 60 degrees on average. It seems that this is the default fan curve target. While carrying out Blender test, we found that it hits low 60s and stays there. What is interesting, it maintains 2000 MHz clock speed without any issues. The larger cooler from its big brother is really doing a good job here. The results get even better when we bring in noise levels into the mix. We ran Unigen Heaven benchmark for 30 minutes to really work it out. RTX 3070 only peaked at 63 degrees Celsius with 2100 MHz clock speed. What's interesting, when we measured the sound from 30 centimeters away, the sound only peaked at 41 decibels, which is barely audible. To sum all of this up, there is no doubt that RTX 3070 is one tough cookie. Quality build, silent acoustics, and good control of temperatures versus performance. It is a great addition to anyone building a rig. If we compare it to the older RTX 2080 Super, we get about 15 to 25% improvement across the board with huge improvements in Blender. If on the other hand, we want to compare it to the Radeon RX 6800 XT, we see a difference between seven and 25% with the latter being high resolution gaming. The card still holds its own in ray tracing and productivity tasks. If we compare the price, this RTX 3070 from ASUS has a recommended retail price of 539 USD and RX 6800 XT is 649 USD. This is a 17% difference, and to be fair, it's about the same in terms of performance. Yes, I know, right now you can't really get either one of them at this price, but I expect in the next few months, the stock levels will pick up, and for those who are looking for a great 1440p gaming graphics card, this is gonna be a good value. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more, and we'll see you guys in the next one.